Hey lovely freaks and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual and true crime, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe or follow button. You can also head down to the to the description box and you'll see a link that will take you to our link tree. And that'll take you to our social media like Instagram at Lovely Freaks Podcast, Facebook, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Yeah. <laughs> I actually watched Chicago this weekend. Ah. Yeah. Um, I forgot how crazy that movie was, though. Yeah. Like, it was such a good movie, though. It was. I went on, like, a musical journey this weekend. I watched that. Milan Rouge. It was great. Um, I thought about watching... and everything. Yeah. I <laughs> thought about watching Les Mis, but I was like, mm, I gotta be in the right mood for that. Les she's Mis, long. Yeah, she's long, and she gives me, like, a headache sometimes. Like, just because there's so much song, there's so much singing. Like, singing. I like musicals, yeah. but, I mean, I don't like, I'm not a big fan of, like... Everything they sing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay with that. Oh, my God, I went to the bathroom. I'm like, <laughs> okay, great. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> Anyways, we got way off topic. Yep. Um, so, today, we want to say happy Tuesday. We hope you guys had a great weekend. My weekend was long. It involved me pretty much staying in a car all weekend. Just running around doing crap. So, hopefully you guys had a better weekend than I did. But, anywho. I'm going to make a full disclaimer right here up front. This episode is pretty intense. Um, a lot of subjects. A lot of kids that get killed. But, not only kids. There's kids, women, men. All different kinds of stuff. So, warning. Yeah. Warning. This, um... Story episode. Has graphic. <laughs> I'm starting to think has graphic content that may not be suitable for all listeners. Uh, so we're going to talk about Peter Curtin, and he is one of Germany's most known serial killers, also known as the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. <laughs> I love that. It sounds. It makes me think of like Dumbledore. Yeah. Harry Potter kind of shit. Yeah. Um. Most of what we're going to talk about today comes from Peter himself. There's a book that is called The Sadist. It was written by a psychiatrist named um, Carl Berg, who was the psychiatrist that over like a year period before um, Peter was executed, because this was back in like the 1900s, he um, wrote down pretty much everything that he said. Like he just was Peter's psychiatrist and Peter told him basically about everything. So, it's a good book. Um, I read some of it. Some of this I got from other sources. Some of this I got from the book. Some of this I got from um, different documentaries and stuff like that. So, anyways. But the book's really good. You can actually... I found it for free. And don't even ask me how I found it. But I found it somehow. I went down this rabbit hole. And I clicked on something. And there it was. It just popped up. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) I just started reading. (laughs) Whatever. Um, We're not going to go into every detail of these murders. Because they're pretty graphic. However, we will, I mean, we're going to talk about some pretty intense stuff, but just know that if you want any more details and in-depth things, I mean, it's pretty, pretty detailed in the book. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Remember the disclaimer. Okay. Okay. So. I have no choice. Born. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a, you don't have an option. <laughs> no option. You can just sit there. La, 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 I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Um, he was born, Peter was born in 1883 in Cologne, Cologne, I don't know, Germany, somewhere in Germany. He was the oldest of 13 children. Um, his family was kind of poor. 13, damn. Yeah, 13. He was the oldest. So, yeah. Um. Thank you. I'd rather not. He was, his father was a drunk and his dad would beat him and his siblings pretty severely. He would also make the children watch as he raped his mother and mm. some of the um, some of Peter's sisters as well. Mm. The father would also sexually abuse Peter, and he went to prison later, um, which is crazy because usually that never happens. But somehow he was able that he got investigated later on, and um, they put him in prison for the rape of Peter's sisters. So. That's a good thing, but, you know, they had to live through most of that. 
Um, because I'm pretty sure they were like maybe 16 or 17 when he finally went to prison or something like that. So, Peter claimed that when he was nine, he committed his first murder. Yeah, that's right. Nine. Nine. Mm Mm-hmm. Apparently, he was on, like, a rafting trip with two other little boys, and they were floating down river. Well, one of the little boys fell over, and he couldn't swim. Mm -hmm. Peter wasn't, like, helping the little boy at all. He was just like, oh, okay. Sucks to suck. I don't know. And then (laughs) the other boy that was with him was like, oh, my God, you know, and he jumped in. And as he jumped in, it was too late. The little boy was already drowning. So, he was like, okay. So, then he goes to get back up on the boat, and Peter, instead of, like, grabbing his hand and being like, come on, man, get on, he holds his head underwater. Yeah, because the little boy's already out of breath, because he was trying to save the other boy. He's frightened, because this other boy just drowned. He's trying to, like, get back on the boat, or the raft, or whatever it was, and he just holds his head underwater. Mm -hmm. He said that, um... Peter, after that, he was found floating down the river. He was, like, crying, and he was upset, and they asked him what happened, and he was like, you know, oh, um, there was an accident, and the boys drowned back river, and he was, like, sobbing, and he said that, um, that telling them the story was the first time he realized that he could, like, make people believe whatever he wanted, and, like, get away with things. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) At nine. That's intense. Because, I mean... Of course, the authorities are just going to rule it as a drowning. These yeah. boys are Plus young. The I don't understand yeah. why there was an adult, but whatever. Um, and yeah, they're young. It just—it's an accident. It happened up river. Um, after this, he became friends with a dog catcher that was in his apartment complex. Uh, this was an older man, by the way. So it's kind of weird, which I thought was you know really strange and odd. Oh. Well, this dog catcher didn't take dogs to the pound. And back in the day, in Germany, like back in this time, they usually would, dog catchers would usually kill the dogs and like sell the meat. And they would also sell like different um, tissues and stuff like that for even doctors in town. Like they would have Mm -hmm. different uses for these animals. Um, The doctors would, which I thought was really strange. So, he would be killing the animals and he would be washing them. He would, but he wouldn't kill them in a nice way. This dog catcher, unfortunately, was a guy that would torture and kill the dogs. And Peter, at nine, was watching all this. Um, This dog catcher also would engage in bestiality after the dogs were dead. Oh! Yeah, and Peter... That's so Once gross. again, was nine, and he was watching all of this, and that there's made some... my whole body turn inside out. Yeah, when you said that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and in the book, there's some pretty intense, yeah, pretty nasty details. Gross. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that. But please don't. When Peter became a teenager, of course, he started engaging in bestiality mm. with different animals. Dogs started off, um, but then he started engaging in sex with sheep when he was 13 and one day he was trying to like you know get a sheep and mm-hmm. um the sheep kept like getting away from him was trying to like just wiggling too much yeah well this was the moment that he decided to merge sex and violence together because he stabbed the sheep um over and over as he was trying to engage in sexual act with it and at the time so he said is the moment that he stabbed the sheep, mm-hmm. he ejaculated. I'm just going to say right now, Peter did this a lot. Like, even later on, we'll talk about, like, with his victims. He would sometimes even, like, go to the places um, where he had killed them. And just the thought of what he had did and all that would make him, like, wow, jizz. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's intense. <laughs> How old was yeah. he? He was 13, right? This time he was 13, but he had not killed anyone Yeah, but yet. I was thinking, like, you're 13 years old. That's gross. Yeah. And intense. Peter also said when he was young, um, the whole time growing up, if he saw, like, a dead bird or, like, a, a horse, like, bleeding somewhere or any kind of dead animal or anything, he would ejaculate immediately oh, as he saw it. Yeah. Weirdo. And it reminds me, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you've heard that song, um by Lonely Island called Jizz in My Pants. Have you heard that song? <laughs> you gotta hear it. Y'all gotta hear it if you haven't heard it. I haven't heard that. If you have heard it, um, it's like, <laughs> I was walking through the grocery store and I jizzed in my pants. And like, it's just, 
<laughs> like it reminds oh, me. Of, gross. It's like he. This dude is really, really like, intense. Really intense. And at thirteen, like maybe if your sex drive is so low and you've thought of so many fantasies, and then you think about that, and that makes you come or something. You mean your sex drive is high. Yeah, but low. like the thing is, is like when you're thirteen, you touch yourself with the birth time. Yeah, but but he was already doing it. He was already getting Dude. in it, ma'am. Sorry, I didn't mean to pop my gum. Um, I just got really relaxed. <laughs> he also claimed to have um, drank the blood of some animals. Uh, he enjoyed the sound of blood gushing from the body of the animals. There was one time where he said that he was at a park or something and there was a lake. And he just cut a goose's head off and started just... Drinking the blood out of the goose's neck. I don't know where people were. Like, you have to. I'm not going to say that he's lying because there's a lot of things like. But even the psychiatrist at one point had said, like, I think he's basically like, I think he's full of shit. Like, there's no way. I was thinking he's got to be lying about this shit. I mean. He really could be this big of a monster. I mean, he's a he's a pretty he's a pretty intense person in any ways as far as like the murders and everything go. But hmm. when he was sixteen, he ran away from home. From nineteen hundreds to nineteen o four, he was in and out of prison, stealing arson. He hated prison because he said that they treated him horribly. Like back then in Germany, prisons. I mean, it was not you know prison sucks anyways. But if they like would chain you up like, on the wall and beat you and stuff like that in prison he spent a lot of time thinking about murder and how he wanted to murder the whole world he wanted to watch everyone burn that's what he said when he was finally released to the streets he started committing his murders may 25th 1913 he targeted an inn at first he was going to just like steal stuff he was going to go in there at night and just steal Mm -hmm. stuff and all that then he spotted a 10-year-old girl named Christine Klein asleep in her bed. Excuse me. He strangled her, sawed her throat open, ejaculated when he started doing this, and then he um, just left. He did have some attempted murder charges before this, I wanted to say, but nothing of this caliber yet. So, this was basically his first murder. He... he said that he tried to like stab women on the street or whatever but this was the first time he actually was able to do it but he just left all that evidence there man yeah well yeah hold on okay (laughs) the next day he came back to the crime scene and he was watching like across the street because he said that he loved the sight of the families that he would put through all this misery and pain it was just like it would thrilled him yeah he's got to be bullshitting this he, is too much. I mean, I don't know. Um, he also happened to drop his handkerchief um, at the crime scene. And when he did, the initials PK were on it. Well, this was kind of a bad thing for the family because her father's initials were also PK. Oh. So, for a while, they were looking into several different family members. Mm-hmm. The father, I think an uncle, and somebody I almost went to like initials. prison and die. Like, got, yeah. you know charged for this murder but um luckily you know the charges were dropped and they didn't go to prison but yeah he almost i mean he screwed up by leaving the handkerchief i mean if today's time he would have been caught like immediately because i don't yeah he was dna yeah (laughs) dna evidence error but you know they didn't have that back then so and june the next month he spotted a girl in her 20s a young lady not a girl um this time he was wielding a hatchet See, throughout his crime spree, he liked to change weapons and methods of killing. And this is one of the reasons why the police had such a hard time catching him. Many people thought it was different killers because every murder was, like, so different. Mm -hmm. So, Peter said he followed this 20-year-old young lady down a dark alley where he had spotted her. And then he snuck up behind her and hit her once over the head with one blow with the hatchet. And she fell to the ground. He then just ran off. So, he didn't stick around for that one. Um, in July, he then did basically the same thing to another person. This time it was a man. And he was on a park bench, I believe. But instead of running off this time, he kind of like hid in the bushes. 
And he said, as I hid in the bushes, I watched the blood rush from his head while he was on the ground. And in that moment, I ejaculated. He, <laughs> sorry, your face. I can see your face while I'm I was reading. I'm just sitting here like, wow. Yeah. This is real life. This is real life. Um, he also broke into several homes in Dusseldorf um, and would do like robberies and arsons and things like that. He discovered a 17-year-old girl named Gertrude Franken asleep in her bed. Peter manually strangled her and then ejaculated at the sight of her blood spilling out of her mouth before leaving the crime scene. This was an attempted murder, though, because she survived. After this, he stopped for many years because he got called to war. He got called in 1914 to World War one hmm. however peter was like yeah fuck that shit because um he went to prison for being a deserter he decided i'm not going to war so hmm. and he went to prison for seven years for being a deserter only seven years which i thought was kind of shit but he got out of going to war so i mean i would have made him go i would have been like oh no you're going somebody's gonna be on your ass like white on rice all the whole time yeah <laughs> but he would have liked it no, he didn't. He didn't like authority, and he didn't... I thought he would like it killing other people. No. Mm-mm. He didn't like that. Huh. After this, he moved in with his sister, um, who was in a different town. She wasn't in Dusseldorf, but I'm not really sure where. I can't remember. But he moved in with his sister, and that's where he met his met his wife, Augustus. She actually killed um, her fiancé how they find these people and she had been with i can't um, even find one person she had been with him for for eight years and she only served five years in prison though but she killed him out of it was kind of like a um she wasn't really like a murderer or anything or a horrible person she just had enough of him like he was abusive basically i don't know if he was abusive i don't know about that but she just had had enough and killed him snapped one day basically um in 1923 they got married and their marriage was not all roses, though. Like, on their first date, he basically was like, if you don't sleep with me, I'm going to slit your throat. Like, that's how their marriage was. <laughs> yeah. But your standards are Why higher. she married him? Yeah. I have no idea. I'm I like, think, well, I well, think this was good. I'm going to leave now. Let me rephrase that. I do actually kind of know why she married him. Because she was considered, like, an old spinster, basically. Not, she wasn't old. She was just considered, like, a spinster in the neighborhood because everybody knew that she had killed her husband. So, like, a milk? What? Like a male? No. Oh my god. I don't know what an old spin. No, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Don't look at me like that. Okay, well, a MILF is a mom I'd like to fuck. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's not what this is. A spinster okay. is like somebody lady. that nobody wants to marry, nobody wants to be with. Uh, kind of like, you know, just this widow widow person old. on okay. this but she wasn't old it's just the fact that she had murdered her husband and guys were like huh, no thanks ah, okay <laughs> so her sister so she was desperate. i mean his sister peter's sister was trying to like set her up you know yeah. and peter's sister didn't have any clue that he was doing this shit and he was a psycho so anyways so in 1925 he finally went back to dusseldorf to return to his reign of terror for some reason he liked dusseldorf I don't know why. Maybe it's because he felt like he could get away with more crimes there. Maybe there's more people the there. Name. That was it. Yeah, Dusseldorf. Between 1925 and 1928, he strangled and raped four women. He also said he committed around 30 arsons in Dusseldorf. Mm-hmm. He said that the arson that he would do was not about the fire. He knew most of the people, like, m- most people like to look at fire like that's why they usually yeah. are arsonists or something like that i mean even i like a good you know winter fire roasting some marshmallows yeah uh but nay nay peter liked the terror on people's faces when he would burn down their homes lands barns etc like that's why he did it such a dick yeah pretty much he would also hope that people would die in the fires um, I don't believe anybody did, though, but that was, like, his hope. He would, like, watch in the distance as he would burn down these barns and houses and be like, oh, I hope someone dies in the fire. <laughs> I guess. Like, that's just my thought. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's the vibe he was putting off. Um, Some German. Yeah. Like, 
What? Like a German villain or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I was going to say Rasputin, but that's Russian. Anyways, February 3rd, 1929, which, of, first of all, you would think that he would have been all up in the war because, you know, yeah. World War One wasn't like Hitler, World War Two was, but still, I mean. There was a lot of violence still. Yeah, you'd think he would have been like all Ooh, up on the German yeah. side who would have been like, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, whatever. Um, February 3rd, 1929, after his shift at a factory he was working at, he decided it was time to kill again. He walked the streets after work and came across Marie Kuhn. Uh, he grabbed her from behind, pulled her into the bushes. He covered her mouth so no one could hear her scream while he stabbed her 24 times with a pair of scissors. Then he ran away. Believe it or not, she actually survived. Wow. Yeah. He actually said when he was cleaning the scissors later on, he noticed that the blood dis- wasn't, like, as far down on the blade as he thought. And he was like, hmm, I guess I didn't stab her as deep as I thought. Like, that was his thought running through his head. <laughs> like, shit, man. Well. Guess I thought I went a little deeper. Uh, yeah. So, now, this next murder is pretty brutal. So hang on to your tatas. On February 9th, Peter saw a nine year old Rosa Olringer uh, playing al- alone in her front yard. He snatched her up, covered her mouth, and then strangled her till she was unconscious. Mm. She was only unconscious, though, she was not dead. He then stabbed her 13 times all over different places on her body. He then ejaculated, just like the others. He sexually assaulted her. Then he stabbed her in her temple. After this, he leaned down and started sucking the blood from her head. This is why he was nicknamed the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Yeah. Things escalated quickly. Okay. Now Peter said he did this, but some think that he was lying because... Like, some think he was just trying to, like, prove his nickname was true and his legend was true of being the vampire of Dusseldorf. Um, During the autopsies, there were, like, bite marks on some of these victims. But then some people were like, well, it could not be bite marks. But, I don't know. I mean, if he would have stabbed them and just the blood goes out. I mean, I definitely think he probably probably was psycho enough to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think anything. Knowing that he did it with the animals. Yeah. And he liked the sound and everything. Um, He came back not too long after the murder, though, to set the body on fire. However, there were so many people around, um, so he didn't, like, do it that day. So the next morning, he returned to the crime scene to burn the body. Three days after this murder, he went to a nearby town, not in Dusseldorf, Mm -hmm. but a nearby one, and he followed a local mechanic named Rudolph out of a beer tavern. He then attacked him and stabbed him 20 times, and he stabbed this man in the temple as well. One thing about this man um, is that he was well known in this small town, and Peter liked to... Find well-known people. Find known, yeah. Like, he, so that was one thing. will be disappointed mm-hmm. or, not disappointed. What's the word I'm looking for? Devastated. Distraught and devastated, yeah. yeah. That was one thing, like, he did, it's not that he went for, like, aristocrats and, like, government officials or nothing like that, but he also didn't go for, like, prostitutes. He, he would actually say, like, the prostitutes were, like, beneath him. Like, that wasn't something he was going to do. Mm-hmm. He wanted, like, shock value, so he would pick children or someone that was known in the community but not super known enough to where they would really investigate you know what i mean and this is back in the you know 20th 20 hundreds jesus christ this is back in the 1920s i'll get in a minute (laughs) so you know i mean their investigation skills are not like today's obviously yeah um august 8th 1929 he met Maria Han and he didn't want to kill her right away he decided to take her out on a date and that's what he did the next day he took her to a garden and then to dinner I think it was like a beer garden which I'd never heard of that but I don't know what that that is but that's pretty cool I would hate to be that girl 
After the date, though, he led her into a meadow. He then strangled her till she passed out. Then she woke up and he strangled her again. When she came to the second time, he stabbed her in the throat with a pair of scissors. As the blood was coming out of her neck, he leaned down and bit her and started sucking her blood. He said he actually vomited after this. And Maria was still alive through all this, by the way, because she was, like, begging for her life while he was doing this. Can you imagine? She probably thought he was a vampire. Like, legit. I would. Yeah. I would have been like, holy shit. <laughs> a fucking vampire. Yeah. He said then he stabbed her in the head and all over her body in a bunch of different places. And then she finally died an hour later. So she survived for an hour. He rolled her body into a ditch and covered her with some branches. He then went home. Um, and the next morning his wife was like, hey, what are these blood stains on your shirt for? And he like came up with some bullshit story. And so he knew he would have to like um like they got into some fight and he was trying to like I guess cover it up or whatever mm -hmm. so anyways he went back and he was like I need to go bury her because if they find her body and my wife knows that there was blood that she's gonna put two and two together so he yeah. went back and he buried her in deep in a cornfield a few days later he went back to the gravesite and he wanted to dig her body up because that was the thing. Like, he liked, like we said, the shock value. So, if she's buried, nobody's going to find her. And nobody's yeah. going to talk about it. And yeah. he wants people to talk about it. He wants people to find the bodies. He wants the shock. So, anyways. He, um, he did. He, he dug her up. And, um. So, we just, like, left the body there? And then the police found it? Yeah. Or somebody found wow. it. Oh, no, no, I remember. He wrote a letter to the newspaper where uh -huh. they could find the body. That's what it was. He wrote an anonymous letter to yeah. the newspaper. Very uh, BTK-esque, yeah. I do say so. Maybe that's where BTK got some of his thoughts from. Because a, a lot of this, like, it, it kind of reminds me of BTK, some of this. Like, the it's, strangling yeah. and then waking up and strangling. And then the... Minus he the, would um, usually always, like, BDSM ejaculate. Thing. Yeah. And he would usually do it, like, in the victim's underwear, or he would do it beside them, kind of like BTK. Yeah. Just really strange. I don't know. Um, I will say, there's one time, I'm not going to say which victim it is, but there's one time where he, like, ejaculated and, like, then took his fingers and, like, inserted them into the victim with his jacket with his cum and I'm just like why I don't, just, you just... I don't understand that that was weird I thought that was a little strange to me yeah. whatever I mean all this is really fucked up yeah. but um, that's the part where you're like what yeah <laughs> that didn't make any sense on August 21st he stabbed two women and one man um, in one night and luckily could you imagine like I'm sure in that time there was a lot of, like, murder going on. Because, yeah. you know. You gotta think, like, Jack the Ripper and all those people. But. I don't understand, like, just walking down the street. And just some weirdo, like, just comes out of nowhere. Out. Stabs you and run off. Like, what? what? <laughs> that would suck so bad. That would. Especially in 1920s, so it would be like, ha! Yeah. <laughs> um, three days later, after he went on his night of terror, stabbing two women and one man he took a break for like three days and then he went to the fair um he saw two foster sisters one of them was five and the other one was 14 um they were walking home from the fairgrounds and he stopped them in like an alleyway mm -hmm. and he was told the oldest girl louise he was like hey can you go run and grab me a pack of cigarettes from the store i'll give you like 20 bucks if you do this for me and she was like, sure, $20. Heck yeah, I'll do that. Because I'm sure the cigarettes were only probably like, I don't know, five cents. So yeah. she got to keep the rest of it. Peter then lifted the younger child up by her neck off the ground. Her name was Gertrude. Mm -hmm. Gertrude. Sorry. He strangled her and he said he was like, he was giggling the whole time he was strangling her unconscious. Could you imagine this five-year-old? The yeah. terror? Like, Poor baby. 
the terror. She thought it was like an evil villain or something. Yeah. Um, then he cut her throat and discarded her body in the bushes. When Louise returned to the scene, Peter then strangled her and stabbed her in the torso. With one pierce to the heart, she was dead. He also bit and cut the throats twice and sucked out the blood. I don't know if it was to each girl or just once to one girl. I couldn't figure that out. He then said he lay down beside the bodies for a while, just staring at the sky, folded his knife up, and then left. Taking in the scenery, you know, just laying there. I don't know. After this, um, 800,000, 800,000 leads came into the Dusseldorf Police Department. And, because everybody was, like, freaking out. They were like, holy shit, we gotta find this vampire Dusseldorf, man. Like, this dude this is, like, a rampage. This is yeah. crazy. Um, they didn't follow up on all 800,000, I'm sure. But they did follow up on quite a lot. And they couldn't figure out who it was. Like, they had no idea. Hammer attacks started after this. So, this is when he started using a hammer. Um, like I said, he liked to use several different instruments. And, um... These are now we're going to talk about the hammer, the hammers. Ida Ruder, I probably said that wrong. She was 31. Um, this was his first victim with a hammer, and this was September 30th. He met her at a railroad station after he was like sly talking to her, you know, mm-hmm. um, because apparently he was like a ladies' man and he looked kind of dapper. I mean, for that time period, he was pretty dapper looking. He had like the mustache, the what mustache. What? Peter Curtin. Peter Curtin. Curtin. K K Q K U R T E N. Right there. Oh, I've heard so, of this guy. Yeah, he was um, he was pretty dapper. So, yeah. where was I? Oh yeah, so she followed him on a walk into the woods and it was starting to like get dark because I guess they were talking and all that. Mm-hmm. It was starting to get dark and she was like ready to go back home. And he told her, okay, however, on the way back he hit her in the head hit her in the temple with the, the hammer. He then dragged her unconscious body into a nearby field. He raped her and then crushed in her skull. He also did the same thing on October eleventh to a twenty two year old woman named Elizabeth Dorier, probably said that wrong as well. He hit her in the head five times with a hammer, and you can see like the pictures um, in the book, The Sadist. There's pictures like of the skull, of their actual skull being oh, hit. Oh, like that? No, that's. I'll get to that picture in a minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> so at this point, he has used in his murders a hammer, a pocket knife, a hatchet, a crowbar, scissors, and his hands, of course. Also, it's been children, women, and men. So, you can see why the police were kind of like all over the place and they didn't have a clue who this person was that was killing all these people. They just thought it was different people, you know, just random attacks. Plus, some people survived, some didn't. But the people that survived couldn't ever describe him very well. And I'm thinking that's because he would come up behind them, you know? Yeah. He was um, very common looking, but also he kind of looked like Hitler, but without yeah, a mustache. Yeah, that's what people, that's what some people said. And some, he did have a mustache at some point, hmm. I think, in some yeah. of those. And it looks like Hitler. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Um, so November seventh, nineteen twenty nine. We're still in nineteen twenty nine. He then killed another five year old girl named Gertrude Albermum. Albermum. He was actually stalking this girl for a while and while her parents were at a park they started like arguing and she he just like snatched her up and kidnapped her. He then Mm -hmm. strangled her and stabbed her over 50 times. He also sexually assaulted her. I will say which I have noticed some that he did sexually assault most of every one of his victims and like I told you about you know the masturbation but yeah he would pretty much sexually assault every one of his victims and Like I said, you can read more in depth about that in the book if you want to, but I didn't want to get into it. Yeah. 
Um, then February 1930, he started a series of assaults that lasted until his capture in May. So from February 1930 to May, he was just randomly assaulting different people, you know, um, stabbing, sexual rape, uh, just whatever. But then in May, Maria Budlik arrived in Dusseldorf on May 14th. She was 20 years old. A man approached her at a railroad station and asked her if she needed help being shown around town. So they started walking and talking, and then he started leading her in a different direction than what she needed to go, like, towards town. Mm -hmm. And she started, like, getting upset. She told him, I'll find my own way home, thanks, or I'll find my own way into town, thank you. They started arguing, and then another man steps in and was like, hey, can I help you? Is this man bothering you? Yeah. Well, who do you think that man was that was asking if he could help? That's right. It was Peter. Wow. Peter said, is this man bothering you? Some men can be such pigs and do terrible things. I can't help. I, I can help you find your way. <laughs> he convinced her to go back to the hotel. Like, there was some hotel he was staying at. And he convinced her to go back. And when they got there, he asked her for sex. And she refused Instead of attacking her right away, which would be most, you would think he would do that, he then actually decided to leave with her. But he led her into a spot in the woods, away from the hotel and away from where he was staying. He raped her. He didn't kill her, though, and he said it was because earlier he had been seen by the man that was, you know, arguing yeah. with her. Mm -hmm. And he actually knew that man. Like, kind of in town. They were acquaintances. Yeah. So, he didn't want to kill her because then that man could have been like, yeah, I saw Peter with her. Yeah. Wow. What a coincidence. So, and I'm sure there was probably people at the hotel that saw them together, too. So, he didn't want to kill her. Um, so, he just raped her? He raped and her. And let her go. Left. Wow. She wrote to a friend about the attack and she didn't want to, like, turn it into the police. I don't know why at first. But her friend was like, hey... Uh, that guy sounds like the vampire of Dusseldorf. Maybe you should uh, report it. Mm -hmm. So she did. And she took two police officers to the hotel that he led her to before. Peter wasn't there, unfortunately. But while investigators were searching around for clues and looking through the building and talking to people, um, Maria saw Peter as she was standing out on, outside, like on the stairs. She saw him walking up the stairs and he walked right past her. And when he did, he looked, like, super shocked. He was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, however, he decided to, like, book it. He, like, was like, no, nah, I'm out. So, he basically just kind of vanished into the, into thin air. Into and, the night. Yeah. Into the, the vampire night. vanished. After this, though, he knew that it was just a matter of time before the police found out. Um, because his hotel was, like, registered under his name. So, they knew that they were, they were going to find out. He decided to come clean with his wife. This part all is going to get really weird that I'm going to talk about. So, she kicked him out. In the book, Augustus actually says the, invest the detectives tracked her down at work and asked where Peter was. She said, mm -hmm. I kicked him out and I don't have any idea where he's staying. The next morning, Peter came by the apartment after, you know, he she kicked him out. And she told him, the police came and they told me everything. They told me everything that you had done. He finally decided to confess to her completely. Because at first I think he just told her like he had been having affairs and maybe had raped some people. But it wasn't anything like he had actually done. Yeah. She was distraught and didn't really know what to say. His response to her shock was, well I guess I shouldn't have told you if I knew you were going to act like this. God almighty. Like, man, if I didn't know. If I would have known you were going to like this, I about all told these you. murders. You should have been okay with it. Yeah. Oh my God. Can't you just be on my side? Jeez. Not like I killed oh, you. She said he was acting depressed the rest of the night after this and like sad and pouty. Oh and blah, my blah, blah. Lord. Now, I don't know why in the hell she stuck around Psh, and let me. him stick around in the house, mm -hmm. but I digress. The next day, she went and told the police everything, though. Like, and she was like, yeah. So, my husband is the vampire of Dusseldorf. You gonna come get him? <laughs> like, basically. 
After this, the police set up a trap. And what it was, was he was supposed to meet his wife. So what they did was, this reminds me of a movie. So what they did was she was supposed to meet him at a church. And she met him at a church outside. And as she's walking up to him, the police like rush in. And like, like, and it just, like, the whole setup there reminds me of a movie. Yeah. So he goes to jail. Mm -hmm. And he gets um, arrested. And... Then he has a whole trial and everything. During his trial, he was actually in a box-like cage thing with just, like, his head sticking out. He also had an erection the entire time because there was crime scene pictures. There was talk about the murder. Oh, my God. Are you serious? So, yeah. Like, in the reports, like, the reporters there were, like, he has a visible erection the entire time that they're talking about the murders. Wow. Because that's his thing, man. He likes to, uh... He's definitely a sadist. He loves the idea of hurting someone and hurting someone. <laughs> um, like we have said before, um, obviously he was found guilty. And I, I talked about that. He, I believe there's nine counts of murder. He got the death penalty and was set to go to the guillotine. And that was that picture that you saw. Okay, so what was it? I'll tell you in just a second. So... He had his last meal on July 1st, 1931, which was a Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it that way. Um, a so, bottle of wine and yes. fried potatoes. Ah, he, yeah, he liked them potatoes. He actually loved it so much, he had a second helping. And then at 6 a.m. on July 2nd, he was walking to go to death. And at this moment... He turned to Dr. Berg, the author of the book that I've been talking about, and he said his famous words, quote, tell me, after my head has been chopped off, when I still, will I still be able to hear at least for a moment the sound of my own blood gushing out of the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures, end quote. And the doctor was like, uh, yeah. Leave. Sure. Bye. Go no, away. he told him. He was like, yeah, I guess. I don't what? Know. <laughs> He'd be like, go away. <laughs> the do- no, the doctor was like, yeah, probably. Like, wow. And, um, so yeah, that was his famous last words, basically. I remember They those- also asked him, like, once he got actually up there, they were like, do you have any last words? And he was like, no. But those were his famous, mm-hmm. like. When you were talking about the food, I remember, I think Shane Dawson made a video about like last food i'm pretty sure he had maybe him yeah i can't remember but so wow that's crazy yeah he wanted to know if uh if he could hear because when you because apparently supposedly it's true because when you get your head cut off like you can hear the last like i don't know two seconds of something before your (laughs) brain dies and um or it might be longer than that i don't quote me i'm not a doctor but i know it i know you can definitely hear I know and, that um, from American Horror Story. Yeah. Thank you, American Horror Story. So, following Peter's execution, his head was dissected and mummified. And that's the picture that you saw. Oh. Yeah. So, the brain was removed and subjected to um, forensic an- analysis mm-hmm. in the attempt to explain his personal personalities and behaviors. Um, when the, it was finally, like... What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Examined. Examined. <clears throat> they found that there were um, no abnormalities in his brain, but there were some things that were kind of off. So, and believe it or not, his head was transported to the United States and is currently displayed at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. So, yeah. And you can see the pictures of his head, and that's the picture of his head. It's mummified, and oh. it's... It's there, man. The thing that freaks me out is that he was so young and he wanted to kill. That's a nine-year-old. At nine? I, do, I yeah. deal with kids all day. Yeah. Like, I well, can't. I'm sure Ooh. there's a few in there that have wanted that to kill yeah, you. Yeah, I know a couple of them. <laughs> like, that would be scary if they came and see Miss Hannah. Like, I, I thought about just. I would literally. <laughs> I would have to, like, call 911. Yeah. Like, I couldn't deal. <laughs> like, you got to take your kid. You got you to gotta give him help. Or her help. You gotta give him help. Give him help, please. I just think it's crazy that his head is mummified and at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. If any of you guys have seen it, let us know. 
I mean, other than a picture. Did if he actually have any been there. head trauma? No, not that I saw. Not that, not that they said. I think that he did have some, um, gosh, I can't remember what it was. There was something in his brain. There wasn't any, like, lesions or liquid ab- <laughs> abnormalities or, you know, anything to suggest. Like a bigger head. Yeah. Or... They thought that he did have, obviously, like, schizophrenia or something like that, but yeah. they weren't sure. That's not to say that everybody that has schizophrenia is a murderer. They're yeah. not. So, um, I know plenty of people that have schizophrenia that are not psychotic, but anywho. Sounds yeah. like a narcissist, too. Yeah, he was something. He was something. Um, so, yeah, that's how he got his nickname because he would, you know, bite the victims and suck out their blood. But some yeah. reports were, like, talking like he, like, drained their blood of, like, in, some of, the, in yeah, some of the reports. That's what I yeah, that's what I thought. I was, no, that's not. They didn't drain the body of all their blood. Okay. Um, there was also reports where they tried to make his wife and him have like this wonderful relationship like she told like he told her hey i'm going to go to prison so in order to collect the money you need to go to the police and tell them that like turn me in and you'll get the reward money like as a last act yeah. effort to like be this loving husband but that's not how that happened at what? all why do they always like, do that like in the book she's like no it's not like, you know, I mean, she kicked him out and then the she did go to the police, but she didn't get a reward and she, she, and they already pretty much knew that he was, you know, because I had heard a podcast about this a long time ago and it was, um, I don't remember what podcast it was, but it was a while back and in the podcast they were like, that's what they said. They said, um, she, he went to her and he pretty much turned himself in. But that's not how that happened at all. So, they were just trying to make him sound like this. They liked the idea of him being, like, a loving husband and a normal guy. But on the other side, he had a dark side. And he was the vampire of Dusseldorf. But that's not really... He was a dick to her. I mean, and he cheated on her. He was hardly ever there. When he was there, I'm pretty sure he was, like, being an ass. So they didn't have a wonderful marriage or anything. I'm pretty sure if they did have sex, he would she was have even to abuse her. he was even working at a factory in Dusseldorf, and she that's not where they lived. That wasn't their home. Mm-hmm. Their home wasn't in Dusseldorf. I'm not sure where their home was, but it wasn't close. I know that. And he had like his own apartment there or hotel, whatever. How could you be in a marriage like that? If I had a uh-huh. marriage and they just I don't know left. if he was, like, working on the weekend. Like, during the week he was yeah. there and on the weekends he was home. I have Still, no idea. I don't I'd know that like, arrangement. You better be with me or not with me. Which is, which, <laughs> what is it going to be like? Yeah. So, anywho. All right, guys. That's the Vampire of Dusseldorf. We hope that you enjoyed. Um, like I said, if you want to read any more of the uh, psychotic gross details, you can go ahead and you can... Find it on the Sadist. I was about to say Satanist. The Sadist book. And it's an older book. And even when you, like, if you get it on uh, the internet or something like that, you can, the pages are, like, brown. So it's definitely an older book. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And we will have an episode for you guys Friday. Should have a newer episode. I thought about doing a um, one of our older episodes. Because we haven't done the, you know, the exorcism of... Um, Ronald Doe that we yeah. did. We haven't posted that one on Spotify, but I think I might wait for that one. Okay. I think the next one we're going to do... Um, shoot, there was something. Aliens? Yeah, we need to do an alien one. But you know the ones that get the most reviews so far? Mm. It's still the uh, the basement. Elizabeth Fritzel and the Josie. It's because they're on TikTok. That's the reason. Oh, is it? <laughs> I didn't know That's that. That's the reason. Not that I don't have TikTok. I just didn't know. Okay. Well, anywho, we will see you guys Friday. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.